Hello, and thanks for joining me on the Ghanaian Farmer YouTube channel. My name is Enyonam, and then in the name is Francis Begde, right? Yeah. He is the hatchery supervisor here in Flow Cell Farms. Now, our focus today for discussion is basically on egg and fries collection. Those are key components to uh, your brood stock system, and it has to be done very gentle and efficient to avoid uh, you know, damage to what you're doing. So uh, we're going to ask a few questions for clarifications or education purposes. Now, George, uh, when we say fries and egg collection, what exactly are we referring to? Uh, fry and egg collection is just taking the fry and then the egg from the rooster. That is the mother and the, the father. Okay. Mm. All right. At what time in the day do you recommend a fish farmer should collect their eggs and fries? What time? Exactly 5.30 to 6. When you are late, it should be 7. Between 5.30 to, to 6. Or 6. When you are late, it should 7 be 7. a.m. You should be able to collect your yeah. fries and eggs. Yeah. What happens if I do it between 8 and 9? Between 8 and 9 is okay. But 11 to 12, there will be problems. When the sun is high, uh -huh. it depends on the weather. When the sun is high and then the temperature of the water is high, mm -hmm. some of the fries may die off. And then uh, the eggs, some of the eggs too may get crushed. Mm -hmm. and then all right. How many times in a week or in a month do you do the collection of fries and eggs? Our collection, uh, the days we do collect the eggs, in a month, I think it will be three times. Three times? Because uh, when we pair the brew stocks on the day, we count uh, seven days. Mm -hmm. When we want to collect only eggs, mm -hmm. seven days we have to do the collection. Okay. But when we want uh, fries in addition, mm -hmm. then we increase the day mm -hmm. so that we get both the egg mm -hmm. and then the fries. Okay. And then the reason why we do extend the time is that uh, at day seven, some of the eggs are no more mature. Okay. And when you take them to the incubation mm -hmm. site, there's always problem. Mm -hmm. Some of them die off and then the percentage we get from there is low. It's very low. So, so we increase the, the day mm -hmm. to 10 or 12 mm -hmm. so that we will get both the fry and then the egg. Mm -hmm. And at that time, when you are doing the collection, mm -hmm. you realize the eggs are well mature, okay. very, very yellowish. Okay. When you collect egg and then it's whitish. It's not, it's not mature. It's not mature. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So in a day, today for instance, how many ponds are you doing? Oh, uh, today we are doing only five ponds. Only five ponds. Only five ponds. Okay. What and what equipment or um, instruments do I need when I'm about to do eggs and fries collection? Okay. First, you have to think about the nets okay. you are going to use. Right egg and fry collection you needed to track the male and then the female tilapia mm -hmm. towards the Edge outlet the pond. yeah okay. towards the outlet side and when you drag them mm -hmm. to drag them to the outlet you need a frame okay a frame that you use net to sew you sew net around it and then you drag them forward mm -hmm. so you need the frame mm -hmm. the net mm -hmm. The scoop net, mm -hmm. a special one of course. Mm -hmm. That special scoop net, you have to sew it in a way that when you collect, you are picking the boost mm -hmm. you will not crush the egg and then the fries. Okay. So okay. when we sew the 
the that particular scoop mm -hmm. net we put a production net in it mm -hmm. so that when we pick the blue stock mm -hmm. and there's fry inside mm -hmm. the fry will, will pass they are not okay. they will pass to the production and then enter the uh, the smaller net that is the mosquito right. net we do call it okay so when they enter that mm -hmm. you pick the blue stock if there's egg mm -hmm. you drop then you take it out okay. then you toss the blue stock okay. over All into right. the pond okay so in one pond how many times do you drag the whole net how many times the first dragging after the first dragging that one starts from the inlet okay. where we drag for it mm -hmm. then the the ones that follow mm -hmm. are three times okay we have to put a net mosquito net of course mm -hmm drag it first and then we pick and then we take the eggs oh, okay toss the uh, the tilapia mm -hmm. the male and female mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. we have to then drag again there are some few left in it mm -hmm. so when we drag mm -hmm. then we uh, we toss them over then we the last dragging is a net behind okay. the frame okay All that right. one after mm -hmm. then in, in in fish farming, I know the fishes that are in the water lake, they do their own hatching. Yeah. So why don't you allow them to hatch on their own and you're removing the eggs and also collecting the fries? Why? In the previous day, we've been having problems uh, with our collection. Formerly, we do use nets that are tied to poles. Then we drag. We don't enter the pond. Mm -hmm. We drag. Sometimes we do get like four pounds from eighteen pounds. Okay. Five okay. pounds. Right. So and that activity we do it every day. Mm. We do it every day. We will have to and then it's energy mm. intense intensive. Mm. So we look at it, mm -hmm. what we are getting out mm -hmm. of the production. We look at it. Then we come to the agreement that we now we have to go incubate to go. our oh. eggs. Oh okay. So okay. when we started we realized it was good. Okay. It was good, so okay. we decided to omit the right. old one. I also realized that there's a water in a, a pan, and then when you collect the fries, you would, you know, um, release it into the water in the pan. Why Why are you doing it that way? Yeah, we have to keep them alive before they get into the pond. Okay. So you have to have water in the pan. Right. Then the fries you take from there, it's not only egg we are taking. Okay. If even egg they breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the egg. Mm. If you take the egg, you put it inside the water like that, mm. it will spoil. Mm. It has to circulate okay. so that the oxygen will get the egg. Okay. So always you have to have water, mm. then you go deep, uh, pour your fry and then your egg inside. Okay. All right. I am told about some pathogens that you have to protect yourself before you enter into your pond. So um, what will be the advice you give to fish farmers who also want to go into uh, production of fries and eggs what do i do before i even go into the pond yeah you just have to disinfect your legs okay with what you have to wash your bowls mm -hmm. your equipment mm -hmm. you have to dip them into either salt solution mm -hmm. or permanganate solution okay you disinfect it for mm -hmm. and make sure the workers always anytime they have to enter mm -hmm. different ponds you have to dip your leg into disinfectant okay. before you enter the pond okay yeah. all right um the gentleman you're working with how long do you guys take in one pond before you move to the next pond are you able to tell how many minutes you it, de it depends it depends the number of people we have in the pond okay yeah and then the experienced guys okay yeah uh, so I tried far, it and the yeah, fish yeah, keeper yeah. Yeah. jumping. <laughs> well, you, so when you are not experienced in uh -huh. it, even picking the fish, you will take like uh, maybe 10 minutes Forever. to pick one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, today you realize that there is one guy with us uh -huh. trying you to You were learn. teaching him? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. so how long does it take to train a staff to be able to know how to, you know, scoop the, the fish and then hold it properly and then try to remove the eggs and all that? How long yeah. does it take? Is it a one, week or one, a day? Yeah. When you are employed to join the hatchery, mm -hmm. the first thing you will do is hold the net, okay. the side of the net, right. so that you see us do what we are doing. Okay. So through that process, you mm -hmm. take like one month mm -hmm. before we give you the uh, scoop net. To be able that to. Okay. This is how it's done. But right. by that time, uh -huh. you already know everything about it. Okay. So during that time, they if, uh, the person even tries mm -hmm. to even draw, take some eggs from the uh, lovely okay
all right i am also told that some of the big fishes they consume the the, the fries why you give them feed because i have been here once yeah. and i saw you giving them feed so is it is it because you're not satisfied is that why they are consuming the smaller ones yeah bruce talk we keep them for production and not to uh, grow them for growth okay to the market we don't grow them for the market blue stock okay so if we uh, we will follow the uh, the feeding uh, what we do on the river mm -hmm. if we will follow it they will grow bigger even picking them will be problem okay. and when they have a lot of fat they mm -hmm. don't reproduce a lot okay so they feed two times a day okay and then we don't give them enough to eat okay you all they 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 have to feed on a high protein mm -hmm. uh, feed so that they will give okay, us. Okay, so the if outcome. you don't want your blue stock or your parent fish that will give you fries to have a lot of uh, fat, you have to limit the quantity yeah, of to, feed you give yeah. them. Mm. That's but, morning and evening, right? Yeah, but okay. it has to be quality. The okay. feed has to be. If it's no quality, uh -huh. they will grow lean and they will not give you the right food. Okay. Yeah. Now, my last question How long do you keep the blue stock for in a year before you? Sell them off and introduce another fish to become parent that will be giving. Do you ever sell them? Do you ever change it? Mm. It depends. When they are overweight, okay. we pick them out uh -huh. one by but we don't give overweight them the whole when they out. Yeah. They sometimes grow, even the female, they even grow bigger and you can't even hold them. Wow. Unless you use your two hands. Because one was about to beat me yeah. when I was trying to yeah. catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Those particular ones, okay. you, you, have, you have to. Uh, just pick them out. Okay. We, we have a, 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 a cage that we've been calling retired cage. Mm. So we, we just put the ones mm. that are retired. Mm. We feed them for some time. Mm. They get a lot of weight. Then we take it to uh, the company's kitchen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those ones sometimes when we have visitors, we do give, give it to them. Okay, so this boot store can last for how long? A year yeah. or two? Two. And you still be two, collecting three, fries? Two to and three years. Oh, really? Mm. Okay. Two to three years. Uh, what's the weight of one tilapia? Are you able to tell? Oh, it depends. So uh, they are from 200 to uh, 300. Okay. 200 to 300. Hey, the hatchery supervisor here in Flow Cell Farms. And this morning, we came here to participate in the collection of eggs and fries. And so he's given you a bit of tips on what the relevance of collection of eggs and fries are, how to go about it how to train your staff for almost a month for them to understand and know how sensitive it is to handle the collection of eggs and everything and how to do things. I'm sure you've had all the information. This should be a very good education for you aspiring to become a fish farmer or if you're already in a fish farm industry, this should be a tip for you in your farm moving forward. My name is Zenyunam and I want to use this opportunity to wish everybody globally from Ghana to Europe to everybody watching me happy food safety day yes if it is not safe it can be called food be careful of what you consume for your own health uh wise my name is Anyam. thanks for watching make sure to subscribe to my channel